back with uh, the second part of uh, myeloid neoplasm updates. Uh, today we will be quickly dealing with the myeloproliferative neoplasms. Now uh, I had told you about what the changes are, uh, how they have uh, formed the new classification, the molecular markers, the mutations have been kept in mind. So you now know that mutations are become to are going to become the game changers, the big players in this field of uh, uh, hematology and hematological malignancies. So uh, the changes in myeloid are not uh, very morphology based. They are mostly based on the clinical spectrum and the mutation. So I start with uh, the CMLs this time and of course it is uh, each and every topic will take time to cover. So I'll make short 10 minute videos for that. So without wasting any more time, let's start with the myeloproliferative neoplasms. So now in the updated classification, what all do you get in myeloid? CML was always there, uh, PV was always there, ET, PMF was always there, CNL, CEL were known entities. Fine. Now juvenile myelomonocytic leukemia, JNML, uh, something which was there in MP and MDS, the bridging category has now been put into MP. Fine, so this is something that you need to remember and then NPN, NOS. All right. So in uh, CML, what you need to remember is that A, they are making the use of accelerated phase CML redundant. Uh, for them, it is like an overlap. Uh, clinically, it is not important for the clinician. So soon, uh, so they are not going to be counting something as an accelerated phase now. It will be either chronic phase or the blast phase. Uh, in the last updated HEME 4R, you remember that even then they had modified the accelerated phase depending on a lot on the type, amount of splenomegaly, the MRD status, the persistence of um, MRD over a particular value, resistance to MACNEP therapy, use of second line uh, TKIs. So they had already made it a, a lot of things in AP were based on how the patient is responding clinically. If there is a spleen coming back or if the spleen is persistent, if the thrombocytopenia, per, um, sorry, there is no thrombocytopenia, but if there is a new thrombocytopenia. So they had made a lot of it, uh, be, uh, the classification was slowly changing into how the patient is responding clinically. So now they say that, you know, categorizing a CML as AP has no clinical significance. It is okay if you tell the clinician that the patient is in CP, chronic phase, then it is all right. Otherwise, what is more relevant is whether the patient is in blast phase or not. And what has the criteria of blast phase become? This is there, greater than or equal to 20% myeloid blast in blood or bone marrow. Presence of extra proliferation of blast. This is a focus of myeloid sarcoma without any blast in the bone marrow or the peripheral smear. Presence of increased lymphoblast in peripheral blood. We all know that blast crisis is not limited to myeloid blast. It's there in WHO. Uh, 70 to 80 percent of it is myeloid and 20 to 80 percent of it is lymphoid blast coming in blast pressure. So this they have made it as a relevant criteria now. Instead of just writing it as a description that if either it is more than 20 percent myeloid blast or you are getting lymphoid blast doesn't mean doesn't matter if it is less than 20 percent. With that if there are no blasts in the bone marrow and peripheral smear but you get a collection of blasts in skin in the eye or somewhere that also casts classifies as BP. Optimal cut, cutoff of lymphoblasts and significance or low level B lymphoblasts remain unclear and require additional studies. Then there are minor changes in the diagnostic criteria for BCR ABL negative MPN where JAK2, CALAR, MPL mutations are considered driver no doubt but PET2, ASXL1 and DNMT3A are now given, are being given prominence in the last 4 hours. If you remember, these things were mentioned but not given too much importance. They are also mentioned, especially ASXL1, etc. in MDS. So these, these are the driver, the main mutations, but the sub-mutations or accompanying mutations which were just mentioned casually in the last WHO are now becoming a part of the criteria. Okay. Then in chronic eosinophilic leukemias, uh, some important changes have been made. The time interval for sustained hypereosinophilia has been reduced from 6 months to 4 weeks. Okay, important. 
addition of requirement for both clonality and abnormal bone marrow morphology that is either megakaryocytic or extra dysplasia has been added elimination of increased blood that is greater than 2% in peripheral blood or 19% in marrow as an alternative to clonality initially it was that either it could be clonal or you were getting 19% blast in the bone marrow or 2% blast in the no you have to prove that those those cells those atypical eosinophils you are getting are clonal whether you get 2% blast or 5 to 19% blast no prove that because there are other amls also where you get eosinophilia with blast there are other lesions where you get eosinophilia with blast so uh, clonality in this case has become important and the time duration of hypoeosinophilia has been reduced from 6 months to 4 weeks these criteria improve distinction between cl and other entities like hes or hypoeosinophilia of unknown signature jmml is recognized as an mpn now with frequent association of germline path, uh, pathogenic gene variants pathogenic mechanism is at least 90% of cases what gene mutation now is important in jml is ras pathway okay and then there are certain updates exclusion of kmt2 rearrangement has been removed monosem 7 if you remember there was it was there in jml has been removed emphasizing the significance of diagnostic molecular studies that is we now instead of monosomy 7 we have to now demonstrate the ras pathway the genetic background of jml also has this this ras pathway activation will also be a prognostic and risk factor indicator mastocytosis i'll be taking quickly uh, in the next uh, uh, slide also so quickly what mastocytosis so that is all about uh, cml now coming uh, the myeloproliferative now coming to mastocytosis are a topic uh, they comprise heterogeneous neoplasms which are of course you all know accumulation of abnormal mast cells greater than 25 mast cells uh, in a cluster so there were those uh, character uh, there were those um, what shall i say guidelines of what to call mast cell sarcoma sorry um, uh, mastocytosis what not to call when to call it sarcoma so yes they are there but there have been certain changes in the mastocytosis uh, category first three types systemic cutaneous has become a separate woe and uh, sarcoma mast cell sarcoma fine means significant comorbidity comorbidities which have now been considered are is if there's an allergy vitamin d deficiency any psychiatric or psychosocial disorder namely expression of cd30 and any kit mutation causing ligand independent activation has been accepted as a minor diagnostic criteria okay basal serum tryptase greater than 20 which should be adjusted in hereditary alpha trypt, uh, trypt, uh, tryptase uh, is a minor so uh, level of uh, serum tryptase level etc you have that entire chart in tiginder singh sir's book where what are the criteria for mastocytosis so now what it has been divided into is major and minor criteria i'm going to be taking that up in detail in the next lecture I'm not taking it up because I'm trying to break it up into like a CML, then a, a MPN, then a mastocytosis. I'll be just breaking it up into shorter topics so that we can understand the topic better. So I think this is it. Uh, yeah, uh, clonal, they are uh, actually in mastocytosis, they're divided into B findings and C findings, which was not very prominent initially. So B findings is the burden of disease, C is the cyto reduction required. Fine. How much reduction do you need for the tumor? you analyze that depending on the b findings that is how many symptom how many symptoms is the patient presenting with how many organ systems are involved with mast cell proliferation fine and there are some minor ref refinements in that and then this is the mutation nm000222 kit p d 816v and what is waf i have discussed and i'll discuss again when i take mast cells in detail there and turn 10% in bone marrow cells or peripheral blood leukocyte as a b finding what is waf related to something molecular i'll de de deal with this first in the next topic and then we'll deal with mastocytosis so thank you for today and i hope uh, you like this session